whereas Reckitt is a company that's grown substantially through M&As internationally as well as in India. But in India, the last acquisition was in 2010, which was Spara. So there's been a gap, but it's a company that always looks for M&A opportunities, and this is the big one. So both Kellogg and Reckitt are also in the frame. Thanks so much uh, for that, uh, Arijit. Let's also get the latest update from uh, the rain event at Kerala as Kerala continues to fight. Uh, my colleague Parisha caught up uh, uh, with, uh, with, with, you know, with, with the Kerala finance minister. Let's uh, listen in. Uh, you know what, what essentially, what, what, what the Kerala finance minister had to say. Our estimated losses suffered would be something like twenty thousand crores in terms of cost of assets destroyed, not the income foregone, huh? about 20,000 crores. Um, this is the worst uh, flood since uh, 1924, when something similar happened in 1924. Today the Kerala chief minister said that let's not rebuild Kerala but let's build a new Kerala. But what are the challenges that the state government is now going to face? Will the road to recovery be a tough one? One, we need to have a more sustainable development, a development process which uh, environmental concerns are inbuilt. Two, we have to uh, okay have new standards of development. Okay, that's what Chief Minister Man is not just uh, uh, renovating the repairing the existing roads. Uh, okay, let's read the better roads um, uh, and so on, uh, and also the housing program. Uh, so we are going to use it as an opportunity to rebuild Kerala. That was, of course, the Kerala FM talking about the event and what essentially is the likely damage and how they are likely to re, uh, you know, invent uh, this uh, entire space once again. Now let's go across to my colleague Parisha. Now Parisha, the WhatsApp story uh, and what essentially will happen has been going on. There was a meeting between WhatsApp CEO and Ravi Shankar Prasad. What were the key takeaways? Uh, yes, WhatsApp CEO came to India and he met uh, Law and IT Minister Ravi Shankar Prasad today. During the meeting, uh, the issues that were discussed have been in news for quite some time now. One of the uh, cru crucial issue is that of fake news. Uh, you know, over last one year, there have been scores of incidents where there have been uh, uh, violence, there have been mob lynching because and all of that has been uh, allegedly because of fake messages circulated on WhatsApp, fake bulk messages circulated on WhatsApp. While government has long been demanding that uh, WhatsApp device a technology to reach to the root of those bulk messages and to uh, reach the link from where those bulk messages uh, messages are being propagated today. Law Minister uh, Ravi Shankar Prasad put forward the same demand to WhatsApp CEO and said that uh, uh, it's no rocket science to devise a technology to know to find out where those uh, messages are coming from. Uh, as a bargain to the same, Ravi Shankar Prasad also said that WhatsApp may uh, introduce its payment gateway which it has been asking for quite some time now if and only if it appoints a grievance officer in uh, India who will attend to all those uh, uh, complaints of fake news. Uh, Ravi Shankar Prasad also asked WhatsApp CEO to register WhatsApp as a Indian entity if it wants to uh, start its payment gateway. So these were the main issues uh, discussed today, fake, uh, fake news circulation, prevention of fake news circulation and the introduction of WhatsApp payment gateway. Ravi Shankar Prasad also said that that um WhatsApp has largely agreed to all of these demands, so we may soon expect WhatsApp to come up with a feature through which it, it will be able to find out where all these bulk message are, messages are coming from. Right, Parisha, thanks so much for that. Let's also listen in to the management at Tata Steel, Kaushik Chatterjee's briefing. Let's listen in. technical issue there's some technical issue with that part so basically we have the takeaways he's saying that i cannot comment on individual cases uh see synergy and cost savings between the highest bidder i won't talk about no i don't want to talk about no i have no indication contested would you want to bid higher so there is a process 
that process is owned by COC and it is now in uh, courts. So let it happen As on that basis. As a company basis. for Tata Steel, would you want to contest? No, I can't talk about these these things in public. So Mr. it's going on a process. Talk anything other than IBC, I don't have to do that. Yeah. As far as Bhushan Steel is concerned, can you tell us a bit about how the integration will pan out in the coming days? It's already months? happening in a full way. And uh, we're very happy with the assets and our, uh, the management team is in place. The integration work has started. So I think we are on the right course. What kind of synergies are we looking at uh, once the integration fully seamlessly pans out with Bush and Steel? So there are multiple synergies. You know, A, because uh, it's in the same line of business, we have synergies in the on the cost side. We have synergies as far as the asset configuration is concerned. So we have network synergies between our facilities in Jamshedpur, Kalinganagar and the Bhushan facilities, including the downstream. Uh, there are proximate synergies because we are in and around the same place uh, in terms of managing the company. It's a listed company, so we uh, always adhere to and comply with all the requirements of being a separate entity. But there are synergies to uh, which are also in, in the marketplace and through customer connects and so on. So there are multiple synergies and we are very uh, uh, positive about the way it has happened so far. Mr. Chatterjee, when it comes to the commodities uh, space, we closely look at uh, how Chinese credit growth is standing out and there seems to be some indication that it will dip lower. Add to that the fact that there's pressure on the Chinese currency as well. How will this translate uh, for the Indian steel industry? So if you look at it, it's the uh, I think the concern on the Chinese uh, steel industry and the steel prices are not because of the underlying fundamentals because those under, underlying fundamentals are still pretty much in in good shape they have the, i think the government in china has worked very hard in terms of getting uh, consolidating the industry and getting the inefficient furnaces out and that's a work in progress as we hear uh, this has been more out of the uh, trade reaction between uh, us and china and that's what we see the currency movement and which is the which is the implicit impact that has happened uh, i think it will pan out over over a, a bit of time and it will normalize to a certain level unless there are more escalations on the trade front so as far as india is concerned you, you know typically the import parity uh, becomes favorable with the depreciation of of the currency but uh, there are also some cost impacts on account of uh, any imported raw materials for example and i think uh, but net net if you look at it the um, the positive impact of uh, depreciation of the rupee uh, that was uh, the management at tata steel talking about various uh, steel trends that are going on at this point of time and integration with prussian steel that's it as far as the team of market watch is concerned we're taking a break stay tuned for more